Hello and welcome to Behind the Mask, Thriving in Healthcare, a podcast created for healthcare employees to explore not only issues relating to mental and emotional health, but also unique challenges that those working in healthcare are faced with. Your hosts are Adina Tucker, a licensed clinical social worker with Dartmouth Health, and Jennifer Henze, an MSW also with Dartmouth Health. Okay, for this episode this week, we are going to be talking about New Year's resolutions and why we fail with them and what you can do. So this time of year, everybody seems to set themselves up with resolutions that they get very excited about and then at some point usually abandon them as if they never existed. I feel like if we don't set resolutions, sometimes it seems like comparing ourselves to other people, we are not trying to be healthier. We don't take personal growth seriously, but if we do set them and then we fail, we may feel worse. So sometimes it can make you wonder, why do we do this to ourselves every year? One reason why people set resolutions is because they actually want to make a change. And in theory, the beginning of a new year seems like a great time to make changes. So then You may ask, why do so many people struggle with keeping goals they set at the beginning of the year? So we actually pulled some research together. Yeah, this data is really interesting and very telling. So according to the research, a little over 38% of adults in the U.S. will actually make a New Year's resolution. And the biggest group of adults who set them are between the ages of 18 and 34. So young adults seem to be the largest group making these goals at the beginning of the new year. Um, But there's also some research about what's the most popular goal. And if you're thinking it's exercise, you're right. That is the most common goal set with about 48% of people who set the resolutions for this, having this as a goal. And of course, there's a joke amongst regular gym goers that they actually avoid the gym in January until all the New Year's resolution folks have dropped off (laughs) because this is what inevitably happens. It turns out about 23% of people who set resolutions quit in the first week. And out of those who set resolutions, 43% of them expect that they will fail by February. So 43% of people are making these goals for themselves fully expecting that they are going to fail one month in. That's really not a great outlook. And if you're wondering how many people are actually successful, well, the research captures that too. 9%, only 9% are successful in keeping these resolutions. Adina, do you set resolutions for the new year? Historically, I have. Usually, it is about exercising more or eating healthier or drinking more water. I find that one's a little bit easier to do than the others. How about you? Do you ever set resolutions? You know, I do, but I'll say before I actually get to the resolution setting part, I usually feel like a big ton of pressure to be compelled to set them to begin with. And then only to, of course, like the research shows, I end up failing them within a week or two. I don't even think I last till February with my resolution. So I'm very impressed by the people in this research. Then after you fail at keeping the resolution, you start to feel disappointed in yourself. And then you maybe start this shame cycle, which can be really discouraging. It's, it's not great. Not a great feeling. But let's look at what the research says about why the resolutions are failing in such high numbers, because I'd love to crack this nut myself. So the most common reason people cited they don't keep the resolutions was that they lose motivation with about 35% of people saying they give up because they just aren't motivated. The second reason for quitting is they're too busy. And then the third most popular reason for quitting is just deciding to change the actual goals. Out of people who are successful, on average, they will have about 14 slip-ups during a two-year period after setting the resolutions. So that's a pretty interesting little tidbit. And kudos to those folks who can keep it up for two years to begin with. So what this shows, though, is that instead of letting a slip up compound into a feeling of getting down on yourself or derailing resolutions, 
these folks are likely acknowledging that, yes, they slipped up and maybe they weren't feeling great and took a week off of exercise. And then they just jumped right back into it. Perfection shouldn't be part of any goal we set for ourselves. Consistency should be consistently taking care of ourselves and meaning if we slip up, we realize tomorrow's a new day and we start anew. But I want us to look at some other reasons why our New Year's resolutions might fail. Okay, so we know that losing motivation is a big reason for not keeping those resolutions and quitting because you're too busy is another high number reason. But here are some other reasons why a New Year's resolution might fail. One might be maybe you have unclear goals and we'll kind of talk about this a little more in depth in a moment, but there are some steps that you can take to make sure that your goals are very clear. Uh, Another reason is becoming overwhelmed. So if you set a goal, that's a long-term goal and it's a big one, it may feel daunting to achieve, might be too big, and you might find yourself feeling pressured and overwhelmed and then eventually give up because of that. And then another reason would be getting discouraged. So long-term change takes time, especially if, if you are trying to get maybe to a healthier weight, you know, if we gain a lot of weight, that doesn't happen overnight. So it makes sense that losing it wouldn't happen overnight, but when you're getting into making those steps, It feels like it should because of the amount of effort, but it may take lots and lots of small itty bitty steps to get to one big change. And it's probably going to happen slowly. And if you're putting in maximum effort and then a month goes by and you don't feel like any change is happening, then you might feel discouraged and want to give up. But like I said, it's important to remember things don't happen overnight. Lasting change takes time and we should be patient with ourselves. Another thing is maybe you're not actually fully ready to make a change. Sometimes people give up on whatever change they're trying to make because they aren't fully ready to make that change. So when we're looking at making healthy changes in our lives, sometimes that means starting something new. And often it means giving up something that's maybe not great for us. It might feel good, but we know it's really hurting us. And that can be relationships, food, whatever the unhealthy thing is that we sort of like so much. And there are also stages of change. Maybe you're in an earlier stage of change where you feel like you might want to make a change, but you're not like super committed to it. You can see how it would be beneficial, but you're not quite ready to go all the way through with it. And that's okay. If you aren't hundred percent ready to change, then whatever you're trying to do is not going to stick anyway. So it's better to kind of come back to it once you feel fully ready and motivated to make changes. All of that makes so much sense. And Adina, I feel like you're helping me already. (laughs) Okay, so we've looked at some research about New Year's resolutions, and we've looked at why maybe they don't stick. So now let's talk about how we set ourselves up to be successful with making a change. First, the best time to start working on a goal, according to the research, of course, is when you are actually ready. If you realize in November that you are ready for change, start then. Maybe don't wait till the new year to begin. People wait until the new year or they only want to start on a Monday. And if you're actually ready, just start when you're ready and you feel committed to actually make the change. Second, start with smaller goals. If the goal is too big or too ambitious, you're more likely to become overwhelmed and get discouraged. I know that happens to me. So what does that actually look like in practice? Let's say your goal Your ultimate big goal is to exercise every single day for one hour. Right now, your exercise is zero. It sounds very familiar. Don't try to jump in with your ultimate goal at first. For the first month, maybe say, okay, I'm going to exercise two to three days a week for 20 minutes. Or I'll take two 10-minute walks every day. Whatever it is, make it smaller, a more attainable goal, and conquer that. Then in a month, reevaluate and challenge yourself a little more. That little bit of success, that'll help you stay motivated and keep it up. Third, really try to understand why you want to make the change. What is it that's motivating you to change? And why do you feel like right now is the best time to do that? Fourth, set both long-term and short-term goals. Make the long-term goals more challenging and the shorter goals should be easier to achieve and more realistic 
but be working towards a long-term goal. And fifth, accountability is a big component of making steps towards meaningful change. If you have someone who has similar goals to you, make that person your accountability partner. That can really be helpful and supportive. And finally, make sure you're getting enough sleep and that the sleep you are getting is quality or sleep. kind of the final piece of setting ourselves up for success. Let's talk about how to decide what your goals are. We talked about having long-term goals and short-term goals. And as an example, let's say you want to lose weight because your weight is affecting your health. Perhaps you even know whatever the total number of pounds is you want to lose while that's great, putting a certain number of pounds to lose within a certain amount of time can be difficult. For one, weight loss that's sustainable takes time. It's a slow process and different factors can contribute, including your diet, the amount of exercise, even how much water you're drinking. So we can break down the goal of weight loss. Instead, let's focus on diet. To ensure the most success, you want to make your goal smart. And SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic, and Timely. So starting with specific, your goal needs to be clear and well-defined. An example would be, instead of saying, I want to eat more vegetables each day, say, I want to eat one to two vegetables a day for a month, and then reevaluate. Next would be measurable. How are you going to know if you eat more, if you don't have a number again, giving it a value that can be measured like a specific number of items or minutes for whatever that goal is achievable. Is the goal impossible or is it something you can actually attain realistic? Are these goals within your personal reach? Are they relevant to your overall goal? and timely. A clear timeline is the most helpful. When are you going to start? When do you hope to achieve your goal? Give a specific date. And when are you going to reevaluate and adjust to either the goal you're working on or maybe to add a new goal? The more you can be specific, you'll know if you're hitting your goal, you'll give yourself realistic things to work towards, and then you can increase the challenge as you meet those goals that all gives you a better chance of staying motivated, not becoming discouraged, and ultimately being successful in whatever change you're trying to make. All right. So after learning all about this research and all the tips and tricks for being successful, are you going to set any resolutions this year, Adina? I will be honest in saying that I actually am wanting to exercise more for a variety of reasons. And I was just thinking about actually this morning that I am going to start doing it now because I know that if I already feel bad now, so I might as well go ahead and exercise now rather than waiting a couple of months. How about you? Have you thought about if you're going to do any for this year, new year? Oh gosh. Yes. I've definitely thought about it. Kind of that that pressure piling on thing I was talking about earlier. And, you know, all of this information, it's incredibly helpful, right? But I think first and foremost, what I'll do instead of that usual thing I do where I rush to go figure out one to set for myself, I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take stock of where I am and what I actually want to accomplish, not do a goal, not pick a goal that feels like I should do it or it's just expected of me. I think for the new year, I'll just allow me to be me for the new year, right? Not pile on the pressure to undertake some resolutions that maybe I'm not completely committed to or maybe even really want to attempt. Just give myself a chance to breathe and be present. Welcome the new year and the new opportunity to change. And that way, I'll really feel like I'm starting off with a clean slate and maybe I can take better account of prioritizing the things that would actually be great workable goals for me and bring me joy and contentment and all the wonderful things that we want into the new year. And I think all of these tips are going to work out a whole lot better if I start there. I agree. And I actually, so I was for myself thinking about exercise because I did a really good job for a couple of years of exercising consistently. I was having some health issues, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I started small and I think I just started walking a few times a day. And then after that, I started adding some strength training. in. once I really got, cause I typically don't love exercise. 
what you were saying was making me think of other parts of my life that, that I should probably focus on. I've had a sticky note by my computer to meditate for five minutes a day for about six months. And I have not meditated, not one time, Oh, (laughs) even though we have the insight timer Mm -hmm. through Dartmouth and all of that. And I, I keep meaning to do it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I think that I know it'll be helpful. I know it'll make me feel, you know, more relaxed and lighter and all those things. So Mm -hmm. I think maybe I should pick Monday mornings and maybe a different morning a week and start there and then see if I can increase it. Uh, That sounds like a great plan. And that sounds like a very smart goal. (laughs) Well, we hope this has been helpful and given you some insight into how to better reach your goals. And we hope you have a happy new year and good luck. Thank you for joining us this week. As always, if you'd like more information and support, please check out our site at dartmouth-health.cobalt.care for additional content, connection to resources, support groups that you can sign up to attend, or to connect to one of our clinicians for counseling, psychotherapy, or medication evaluation. We appreciate you listening and hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you.